invisible ancient albatross taking a back seat tonight uh but we got some wonderful stuff for you but let me introduce the boys as usual we got the cypher unlimited crew here of spigs 18 or anthony we have ad or alpha dean in the house and uh yeah dean what are we doing tonight well tonight it's all about the fun it's all about the game it's all about what's happening around that great city of tallis so I get to read the GM tonight and run a great adventure for everybody. Just so you guys understand, though, this is an excerpt from a uh, Monty Cook product that's coming out called Grip of the Ebon Hand. And we're just doing an excerpt from it. Uh, so everybody knows what's going on there. Um, this is going to be a great time, a lot of fun. And, you know, if you want to look out and pick up that product in a couple of months or so when it's uh, released to the public, it's called The Grip of the Ebon Hand, but this particular excerpt, excerpt is called Return of the Ebon Hand. And Anthony, you know, why don't you give us a character sentence and uh, get everybody introduced for me? Uh, just before we get started a little bit, just touch on a little things. This is also, this is the same adventure that was run at Gen Con, given to the asset team, and will be run at Game Home Con. So if you're planning to attend Game Home Con and want to view this adventure for the first time, mute us now. Keep the screen on so you can see our pretty faces, but mute us now because <laughs> there will be spoilers. Once again, this is the Asset Team adventure that was at Gen Con and will be at Game Home Con. And a special thank you to uh, Charles Ryan, the CEO of Monica Games, for allowing us to actually bring this to our audience. We really appreciate it. It was, it was very kind to him and um, we're forever grateful. But um, going forward, let me introduce myself. Hey everybody, I'm Spigs. I'm Anthony for Cypher Limited. If you're on this channel, you probably already know who I am, but I am playing Tanja Loveless. He's an honorable ranger, elven ranger, who wields two weapons at once. And let's go to Jason. Who are you and who are you playing? All right. Um, Jason C. on most of your uh, socials and such. I'm playing Draldan Moore, a dwarven paladin who slays monsters. And you can probably leave your video up on like what Ant said, because I kind of look like a dwarven who slays <laughs> monsters. <clears throat> I looked the part. Uh, but I'm here to uh, support uh, the power of Lothian, and I'm sure everybody will be on board with me. So who are we going to next, Ant? Uh, how, how about Ray? Who are you and who are you playing? Well, as, as previously mentioned, I'm Ray. Uh, mo those of you watching will know me as Dissonant Signal in the CU Discord, one of the golden ones. Uh, and today I am playing Runk who is a doomed orc warrior who moves like the wind with the magic flavor. And last but not least, our brother from another mother, Andrew Marlowe. Who hey, are everybody. you, who are you playing? <laughs> I am Andrew Marlowe. I'm a freelance game designer. I am playing Bablasto, a gnome addict who bears a halo of fire. So this is gonna be a good time. <laughs> Uh, just don't burn the party, Andrew. Just don't burn the party. <laughs> I make <laughs> no promises. So with that being None. said, I <laughs> would like to welcome all of our players to the game tonight and thank everybody once again for showing up. And so, you know, show up, get ready to show out. Let's show these people, you know, the power of Cypher system and Cypher Unlimited and what we like to do. And only other thing I got to say is people out there, if you like what we do, you know, give us a like, share, and subscribe. You know, if you're watching us on YouTube, you know, like, share, and subscribe on uh, Twitch. And, you know, we're also on Facebook, as well as having the largest Discord server, fan-run Discord server for all things Monty Cook. So with that being said, let's get into it, guys. So you guys have just, you know, made your way back up out of the, uh, out of the catacombs and you've been resting for a few days, you decided to go take your wares in to an old friend, uh, Ebert Boatcrafter. And he has a, you know, he's an outfitter in Midtown of, you know, for Delvers. And his shop, you know, you guys figure you get there early and sell your wares and everything. Um, so with that being said, you guys are making your day down, way down, you know, Midtown Street. 
and you hear a crash up in the distance, like a window breaking or something. And you see a couple of figures darting out of what looks like the front of Ebert's place. What are you doing? I mean, um, I'm going to give chase. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to set off as fast as I can. All right. So you set off and you run down, you know, as fast as you are. When you get to the, the T in the street and you saw they went to the left, no sign, none whatsoever. There's, there's not a hint. Mm. You don't even smell anything on the wind. Mm. Uh, Tanja would turn to the dwarf and say, what is the rush? Why is everybody so, always in such a hurry? And I'll slowly start walking in that direction. I'm just standing right. up at the T-junction, just waiting for the rest of the, the group to catch up. <laughs> so you're standing at the T-junction. As you guys move forward, you see that the front window of uh, Everett's Delver's Outfitters is broken. And you can see through the window that Delver, I mean, that Everett is sitting there with a rag to his head, you know, and there's blood soaking the rag. I want to go in and, and see what I can do to help. I'm obviously not a healer, but make sure he's all right. Check in on him. Yeah. I'll run in also. Um, does it look like he needs healing or is this like a surface wound? Uh, he, it, don't, it, it's, it's okay. Uh, what? Where'd he uh, go? Where'd he I, go? Dean, as they all inside talking, I'm going to like survey the outside, like looking with a broken glass to see if I could like figure out like how, how did this place get broken into and if, if I see any uh, like footprints or anyone or someone leaving the area. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to... I'm going to be prowling, just prowling around the street, uh, just keeping an eye on the passersby. Okay. Uh, both of you can make perception checks to see if uh, you, you notice anything. Let me see if I have anything that will help me with this. Um, and I don't. <laughs> uh, neither do, neither <laughs> do I. Okay. I'm just straight rolling. All right. Oh, I got an 18. You got an 18? I got a four. I got a four. All right. So, um, you really um, don't notice like anything of pertinence or like where somebody could have gone. But what you do notice um, is a small individual. They were so small and and, and dressed in dark robes. uh, Unconscious. It's like an unconscious gnome laying you know by the door you know outside looks like what it really kind of looks like like she got barreled over when you know whoever ran out the door Ray, what's your character's name again mine uh i'm runk. Run, i'm runk runk, runk. I, I, I would go runk that's why you don't rush and I, i'm gonna say the reason why we didn't see it when we initially because there was like a half barrel covering it <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna kick the barrel over, and and uh, like show him the direction of the gnome, and then I'm gonna sort of like not touch it, but like put my foot to like push it to see if it's moving. Or it's I'd a- like to, I'd like to use premonition, uh, premonition on the unconscious gnome. Okay, and um, give me a, give me your roll. Uh, nine. All right, let's see here. So basically, uh, what you get with the uh, with your premonition is this person. This person looks like they were coming to sell some things, and um, but it's things are kind of. Uh, I guess you can say they're kind of, it's kind of vague. Are they breathing, Dean? Yes, they are alive. 
They are very much alive. So I'm a motion to, um, it's, can I tell if it's a male or female? It's a female. Right. I'm gonna I'm a pick her up. Like, you know, like try to pick her up and stand her on her feet. Okay. Um, she's a little graggy on her feet. Um, are you all right there, Les? What, what happened? Who, who was, who, did, who, who hit me? Who, someone just barreled over me and knocked me into those barrels over there. That's rather curious because I was just about to ask you the same thing. Who hit you? I don't know, just somebody, they were a blur. Do you know what direction they went? Over my head? <laughs> For some reason, I think a lot of things go over your head, right? Uh, it's okay now. Yeah, now then, that's not kind. Uh, that's, that's not a kind okay thing now. to say. That's not funny at all. <clears throat> be nice, be nice. I, I'm a motion for the paladin to see if, um, if, if uh, there's any internal wounds or anything that maybe... Uh, yeah, does this gnome need healing at all? Uh, you could perceive that, yeah. I would say sure. All right, I'll use the <clears throat> blessing of St. Gustav to heal you. And how does that look when you when you call forth the, the blessings of St. Gustav? <clears throat> uh, I raise my hands above my head and make the sign of infinity <clears throat> and call to St. Gustav <clears throat> to bring down his healing powers. And then I touch the gnome's forehead. Okay. And cross my fingers when they're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, of course it, it, it works. Um, you, heal, you can give uh, you can make a D6 row. Tell me how many points you restore. All right. Two mighty two points. Oh, beautiful. She, her eyes kind of sparkle a little bit and she smiles at you. She goes, thank you, dwarf brother. So uh, anything to help my friends. She looks at, uh, he looks, she looks at ever. She goes, listen, um, I think I need to get some rest. I'll come back and, um, you know, I'll, I'll bring this these things back and we can, you know, barter for it later, okay? Do we see any markings or like directions of, like now that we know where exactly she was hit, is it possible to look to see like if uh, anything on the ground or anything to give us any indication of the direction of the thing that, would, that hit, hit her? running either to or from like was it running into the store or out of the store no nothing really Everett looks at you guys and goes you know it's kind of crazy but i think i recognize that guy who came here but that's impossible he's dead is he dead dead or dead dead <laughs> It's a fair the question. last time I saw that guy was probably about, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when I was still delving myself, you know, and, and most of the time when half your skull gets caved in, you're dead, dead. Mm. You described the Ebert, the this one? is Tullus. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I have, I have to agree with Blasso here. Dead in Tolus is sometimes just an inconvenience. Mm. Well, listen. I, I I don't know, but you know, there's just rings of uh just hold on a moment. And uh goes back, you know, behind his his counter and rummages around for a minute. He comes out and he hands you an old leather bound book. He said, I got this in trade from a friend a while ago. Maybe it's worth a read. Maybe uh, 
maybe it can help you out, you know? Uh, thanks for your help. Appreciate it. Okay. I'll, I'll take the book from him and kind of look at it. What's right. the, what's it say on it? It's an old journal. Um, and scrawled in, you know, a lot of different, you know, uh, I guess you could say, uh, dialects, but you can make out a lot of what's written in there. Um, and basically, it's a journal of an old explorer named Fulton. She, uh, she and her comrades made a lot of gold and earned a lot of reputation some 25 to 30 years ago delving into, you know, the, under, the catacombs under the city. Um, the most interesting account that you can see right off the bat is that it begins with a shaft that begins in Midden Heap and leads down into a region where strange chaos worshiping knights revere raw power of something mysterious. And despite their allegiances to chaos, they had a sort of nobility about them. Plus apparently the leader of these knights, someone they call the ghost queen, apparently has a great large treasure hoard. Oh. Have we ever heard of this ghost queen? No, you haven't heard of it. You know, I mean, she, she, the ghost queen could have gone by another name, possibly. Hard to say. But you guys have never heard anything directly of, uh, about a ghost queen. And one of the other nice things about uh, this particular book is there is a rough map. If you're looking on uh, roll 20, you will see this rough map that was drawn for you. I definitely peek over. Um, how do you pronounce your character's name? Blasto. Blasto. I definitely peek over Blasto's shoulder when the map appears. And, and I smile. I go, now this is what I'm talking about. Hey, Dean, where's the map? Yeah, I don't I see don't, the map either. You have to hit either. share the play. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Give me just a second. I, that's my fault. I, I messed up. I would definitely peer over ah. Blast, Blasto's shoulder. And I go, now this is interesting. Wherever there's a map, there's usually treasure, Blasto. Oh, yeah. And you should see what it says here about it. And I flip to the uh, passage about the the treasure. I, I put my head down a little and goes, I am not that great with my letters. Can you translate for me? And I'm almost like kicking the dirt. So what? what you guys notice about this is that it has a lot of a lot of scrolls and, you know, some sort of shorthand, you know, but it's filled with information about Ghoul's Labyrinth beneath the city, including various kinds of doors, chambers, and features found there. Probably the most interesting path on the map is through the labyrinth that starts at Midden Heap and ends at a point where there's a pit of chaos energies very near the city's underground prison. And you guys can look at that. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty interesting there. What's that say there, Blasto? Where? Where are you pointing? Down below. Uh, midden heaps? Blue, blue steel. Blue steel door. And then it says tunnel, tunnel heads downward, showing this, this, this tunnel here. And there's some uh labyrinth uh map bits and uh says fountain room wasp nest statue room powerful magic knights doors queen and he points out each of the locations on the uh, map as he goes through i'm and over the hill on my two swords and i'm smiling now i look over at the group and i'm like oh this is going to be a very interesting weekend indeed isn't it are you guys seeing this? Um, where's the you are here? 
<laughs> Monk's just looking over, looking over the map, just just nodding. You can you can tell where the you guys know where the Midden Heaps is. They're you know further down through Midtown, and uh, you'd probably gonna have to just kind of suss out. There's an entrance into the Warrens. You know where this map shows where in the Midden Heaps. Right then, who wants to go dumpster diving? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I don't really like it up here much anyway. So you I'm guys more are down there. So you guys have the option. Are you going to buy anything while you're there at Ebert's place? Um, do you want to, you know, get a night's sleep and start out in the morning, or are you ready to just jump that right in feet first? Runk is like rearing and ready to go after not being able to chase those people. Is just like just like filled with suppressed rage and energy is ready to go. As soon as Runk said who wants to go dumpster diving, I was already <laughs> walking in that direction. Like um I'm following. <laughs> Real quick, um before we before we, we head out, <clears throat> I wanna uh Dean, I wanna take a quick quick peek through the uh the journals. Um kind of make a, a survey of the text and see if there's anything that stands out that we should probably have that may not be standard equipment mm -hmm. i don't know if there's anything on there that might not be considered standard equipment um you can kind of suss out through what what you're looking at that you could be underground for depending on what you encounter, you could be underground for a couple of weeks. So, you know. So food. Food. <laughs> Definitely food. <clears throat> Runk's good for rations. Runk's got 10 days. I and there's a, days you, you see right there, like um, where you, Why you know, we worry about as you're looking food? through the journal and you know, it looks at you look at the map, and I, you, you kind of get the idea where you see the markings of a blue steer door. You see scrawled in, you know, a really rough hand, a large chamber with an unusual shape, strangely empty, something eerie about this place, blue steel door to the north. Um. There's always food to be scavenged in the underdog. There's moss, there's wild animals, there's tons of stuff we can eat. Man, plenty to eat. Um, does anybody in our group have thieves skills at all? Nope. I have nothing that'll help you with that department. <laughs> I punch things. That's basically all I do. Yeah. I, I can, see, things in, I can see in the dark, I can scavenge. <laughs> I'm basically an underdark ranger. I can right. climb up things and then punch things. I just I just punch things and run fast. <laughs> all right. Um, I not really a thief, but I travel with thieves. I might have an inkling of what I'm doing. So I would like to go ahead and buy a set of thieves tools if Ebert's got them. Yeah, he looks at you and goes, hey, this is a master set. It'll cost you five gold. I've oh, got Dean, I just realized that my character sheet doesn't have any ciphers. Somebody mentioned it in chat. Are you okay. sure? Yeah, do you want me to just pull the ciphers from the characters, from one of the other character sheets? There's zero ciphers on the sheet. Hold on, I'll give them to you right now. All right, cool. You guys kill, figure you are you going to pay for that, Andrew? I am. All right. Uh, all right. So you have a, you have a decent set of thieves tool there. Anybody else want to buy anything before you guys start to head it to find the? Uh... Um. Yeah. Is there? Uh, a net available? Sure. You can buy a net. Cost you about two or three, uh, cost you about 10 coppers. Okay. And how about like a flask of lantern oil? 
Uh, sure, you can buy a flask of oil. Cost you about another ten coppers. Okay, that's it for me. Yeah, I'm good. I got my fists. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. I'm just standing by rock, like, can you believe? Yeah, it? no, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are Blasto, we moving or not? Blasto said we could be down there for a week. This is oh, so ah, I want to punch things. Uh, I'm not really good at punching, but I have other. Oh, I am. I sent him I'm to you and check him. your check our check the message. Oh, I thought you were just gonna put him on a sheet, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent him to you. It's easier. Easier for you. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, okay. Give me a minute to put him on the sheet then. All right. So we got a net. We got a flask of oil. We got a set of thieves tools. We got one guy just ready to punch things. Yeah. And we got another guy that wants to spend a week under the underground. Oh, I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So are everybody making their way to our mitten heaps? Follow the stink. Yep. <laughs> All right. So you guys think, are... I'm sorry. Um, it just says four speed points. Does it mean that it recovers four speed yes. points? Yes. Or... Yes. Okay. Oh, you can go. I'm sorry. All right. So you guys are making your way through city um, early morning. Like I said, no, um, not many people on the streets, not many guards out, you know, the guards, of course, making their rounds, doing their jobs, but everything else is uh, basically quiet. So you make it to the mitten heaps and how are you going to go about trying to find the entrance? Uh, um, Runk, Runk is going to leave that to the more intellectual members of the group. I would, I would stop and lick my fingers and then put it up in the air, almost acting like I know more than what I'm, I'm doing. But I, I am um, familiar with um, what you call it, dungeoneering. So I, I want to do a perception roll to see if I see any obvious entrances. Go yeah, for it. I'm I'm trained in stone telling, so can I help him? Absolutely. I got a 12 on the roll, and if he gives me an asset, it'll be a 15. There it is. That's exact. That's real good. Um, yeah, you you look around, and, you know, um, you and Drowden at the same time go there. And you see a rusted, rusted out, a bunch of rusted out metal but it's laying over the top of a grate. Hey, come help us with this. I go to lift it first by myself, see if I'm strong enough. <laughs> Would you like a GM intrusion? For sure. <laughs> who are you giving the other, who are you giving the other XP to? I uh, will give it to Jason. All right. So you go to move the, the grate and this rust-colored creature, kind of like a turtle with a couple of tentacles on it, rises up and surges forward. Roll initiative, party. Oh, okay. All right. What's it mean when you get a uh, two minus one? <laughs> a two <laughs> minus one? <laughs> yeah, one. Because so that's what I got. Oh, the my steam. goodness. <laughs> Okay, so would you get fifteen? What about you, Andrew? I have an eight. Jason, I have a to see oh, but I am trained in initiative. <laughs> All right, so fifteen, being trained in initiative moves you to a three, so that's actually a failure. So the fifteen actually goes. What did you roll, Jason? Not twenty. Oh <laughs> well, you absolutely nice. go. You absolutely go first. And Anthony, we'll get we'll 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 uh, handle your GM intrusion in a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Dean. 
Yes. I don't know that I am trained in initiative. I take that back. It's got a double dash. Yeah, that means you're just regular. Oh, you're just okay. regular. Okay. So, no. Okay. I, so I'm not used to it being on the list and it not actually being something. <laughs> right. Got you. <laughs> yeah, you're just normal guy. So, all right. So, no problem. Uh, Ray, you, mm. uh, should I say, uh, Draudin, you first? So, is uh, uh, Runk first or what? Who's no, up? no. Draudin goes oh, first. Draudin. He wrote a natural. Oh, Draudin. Draudin. Yeah. Um, all right. I am going to. Swing my battle axe at it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I rolled a 15. And because you rolled a natural 20, I'm going to give you another swing, give you a free attack. Go for it. A second to hit roll? Yes. Well, that one's only a six. All right. So what, what you said you're hitting with your greatsword? Battle axe. Battle axe. Um, how much damage does that do? Five. All right, so you strike into this thing, and a, you hear a, a strange metallic sound, and I need you to uh, make me another d20 roll. Uh, oh, I should have said I have Monster Bane. It inflicts one additional point of damage with weapons. It should all be calculated in. So yeah, your your yeah, damage should be right. Yeah, but I'm rolling with regular dice. So, oh, I see what you mean. So the five is including it. You're right. Yes. All right. So I need another roll. Mm-hmm. Thirteen. Okay. So you see, you hit this thing, battle axe, clean hit. You hear a strange grating metallic sound. Your blade flashes for a moment. You see that the it looks like the the shaft of the I mean the blade of your ax starts to rust over, but then you see the rust just kind of fall off. And it's a, you know, it's still, you know, there, the way it looks, you know, nice and shiny. And Do you I think it did any damage at all? Oh uh, yeah, you definitely see that you've done damage. Okay. Ray, or should I say Runk? Ray. Uh, well, uh, Runk is going to do what Runk does best and is going to hit, um, is gonna, just going to punch. Um, so that is uh, a nine, but uh, it's eased by two steps. So. Oh, you hit. Do I hit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Run Runk's just going to just gonna run up, see this, not care, and punch. And okay, it's five I'm damage. Five? Five. Oh, yep. Okay, so you see Runk run in and hit this thing <laughs> right in it. I mean, just like right in the side, right near where uh, Draudin slashed it with his battle axe. And the thing like shifts over to the side and one of its tentacles is waving like, you know, really weirdly. And then it kind of writes itself. But yeah, you, you rocked it really good. <clears throat> uh, so... We're going to deal with that GM intrusion. Um, Anthony, can I get you to make a, or should I say, uh, Loveless? Can I get you to make a, uh, give me a speed defense roll, but it's hindered. Okay. Let me see if I have anything that uh, gives me speed defense. And I don't <laughs> Oh, wait, I have a, oh, no, that's an action to do. Okay, no, nope, I don't have anything. All right, I got a five on the roll, so if it's hindered, it's a two. Oh, <laughs> okay. So as this thing, oh. as this thing writes <laughs> itself, both of its tentacles come sweeping <clears throat> out, and they smack you right in the chest. Oh. Um, what are you wearing? What kind of... I, I'm wearing... Like a just picture like a pure like black leather, like a jerkin with a black leather sleeves, and my my two swords are like boleroed in front of me, you know, like uh in an X pattern, and my bow is strapped across my back. But I'm wearing basically like basic like a dungeoneering traveling clothes, but in leather. All right, give me um when the tentacles hit you, yeah, give me a uh <laughs> give me give me give me a, a 
Give me a Mike defense role. Oh, Mike defense? Yes. All right. Let me see. I failed the speed defense already, right? Yes. I got a 11 on the roll, and I don't have anything. So it's a All right. Left. So you get hit smack dab in the chest. Um, you're going to take eight might points of damage. Okay. I have armor. Does my armor affect any of that? I have one point of armor. Yeah, it'll reduce it by one. Okay. But you're also going to move down one step on the damage track. Right. Oof. Oh, oof, oof, oof. Oof. You see, I, so now I'm picturing that I got hit, and y'all guys see me. I don't fall back. I fly back. Like, yes. I'm literally flying back a good three or four feet. And, you know, you just see me like I'm in front of you, and now I'm behind you because I went flying across. You Ooh. said light damage, right, Dean? Yes. All right. So... <clears throat> You're up, Andrew. All right. So, um, but Blasto is going to live up to his name, and we're going to start with a spell. So ah. he starts weaving his hands in front of him, and glowing runes appear in the air as he pulls together a blast of cold. And then the Blasto started blasting. Okay. <laughs> um. So, um, I conjure forth a blue white bolt of screaming cold energy. And launch it at this creature. I am going. Ice. I am going to apply effort for damage. Okay, give me um, give me the roll. Um, actually, my effort is three. I'm going to go ahead and apply effort for damage and effort to lower the difficulty. All right, so that means you're going to spend three points for one, or two well, points for one for one level of effort. Right. And that means I'm spending five of my 18. No, you're not. I have, yeah. No, I have because you have, you have a free level of effort with the three. You what? have an edge of three. You said you had an edge of three, right? I have an edge of two, but I have my power oh. cost two. Okay, I'm sorry. So my power also costs two. So it's a total yep. of five. Yep. East by one, I roll 19. Oh, do you want the additional <laughs> damage or do you want uh, an, a, an effect? Um, let's go for an effect. <coughs> okay. So you see, you guys see Boblasto, you know, weave these and you see these runes and the runes start out in a fiery red and then they blast a cool. They then they cool down to a, a, a cold, you know, a blue, an icy blue, and this burst of cold energy slams out. It hits the creature. How much damage did you do total? Um, well, I did one level of effort, so I did right. a grand total of seven damage. Oh, okay, perfect. So nice. you literally hit this thing with this burst of cold, and you know, normally you know things like this, you end up freezing it. Well, the, it's just so icy cold. It goes out, it freezes it. And then a second later, after your blast is there, it, it just, you hear <laughs> and it burst apart. You know, and the creature is down. Who has some of Go ahead. I was I was in melee with that thing. Am I now covered in its its remains? You're actually covered in <laughs> snow and oh ice. god. Oh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn to, to the blast on and just like holding my arms up, just covered in this icy slush. Really? Really? Hey, it could have been fire. I'm about All right, I'll give you that one. It could have been fire, would, but would you would you say and I'm about 10 feet away behind them, sitting on the floor, because I smashed into what looks like a wooden um, barrel, and I'm sitting there laughing. And, and I pull out a small vial, which is my um, 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 potion of lightning siphon. And it's a small little vial, and you see, like, the, the lightning sparking, hitting the glass as I open it. And I look at the group, I was like, maybe I should have took this earlier. 
and uh, you see me drink down <laughs> what looks like a lightning bolt, and you see like the bottom of my throat light up as the lightning goes down into my throat. And then basically anyone that hits me takes one point of life in lightning damage. For the <clears throat> Um, I'm gonna seeing him do that. I'm gonna walk over and punch him in the shoulder. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll, you'll not, not, not full, not full strength, not full strength. But I'm just gonna like the little like, oh, good on you, mate. Punch onto his shoulder just to see if it works. Yeah, you see that little spark. That you, see a, you, see a a you see a little <laughs> yellow lightning spark bust you in the hand. <laughs> well, you know it's working. You, you hit me, but you won't help me up. I see how it is. Yeah, of course. You were laughing at me getting covered in this, so. I'll send my hand to get picked up. <laughs> so hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick you up. Yeah, I'm gonna put a hand down and help you up. Uh, I better not get shocked again. <laughs> All right. So anybody uh, doing anything else? I guess I'll take a recovery roll before we. All right, go for it. Uh, am I, how long am I going to be down in the damage track? If I take a recovery roll, if you take a recovery roll, you will come off. You will go back to hail. Okay. All right. So I got a four plus one, so I recovered five points. All right, and you're now hail. Yeah. Nice. I'm just still. I've I've helped him. I've helped him, and I'm just now wiping this stuff off i'm just like ugh. It, it just kind of start your body heat is like letting it sloth off ugh. leaves a couple of little slimy paths on you how does it smell worse than the midden this is mm. that was pretty cool blast though you gotta show me how you did that many years of study oh then i guess i'm out I study for years too. Punch and study. School of hard knocks. So this is probably going to be fun if there was something guarding this before we even went down there. What do you say, guys? Ah. You hear, you hear a voice. So tell me, gentlemen, what exactly are you doing around my place? What's what's going on here? As soon as I hear the voice, you hear the sound of two blades unsheathing because I learned my lesson from getting my ass kicked about five seconds ago. <laughs> and I turn around with two extended blades. Um, probably, about 10, probably about 10 or 15 feet from you, there's a woman dressed in very, very expensive leathers. She is absolutely stunning. Who called the dominatrix? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> she looks. She just giggles. Oh, sometimes I wonder. I wonder. You, my boy. Oh, I could show you something about being dominated, but uh, that's not what I'm here for. Why are you boys in my neighborhood? I look over at the, the two more um, stately of our party <laughs> to respond. Uh, the blaster kind of tries to... Does she look familiar at all? I mean, who who do we know who controls this neighborhood? Give me a... You got insight roll? Um, I can make an insight roll. I don't think yeah, exactly. I have anything yeah. to help with that. But oh no. Um, as a matter of fact, Dean, um, you get an intrusion. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful name. This is an this is an issue. Basically, um, yeah, you actually think you know her. Um, and you kind of had and you think it's a girl that you studied with for a little while. And you really have kind of a little bit of a thing for her. She's a, it was a half elven, uh, half elven sorceress that, you know, when you were studying and you guys were, did uh, some early exploring together, 
but she would never give you the time of day. But it, you could swear this is her just maybe a little older. Uh, I'd like to use premonition on her. Okay, let me see. You know, click it and uh, so it pops up in the in the uh, in the chat on row twenty. Uh, well, uh, that uh, that one. Yep, there it is. Oh, I love that ability. Yeah, and I rolled nineteen. Beautiful. Um, so the one thing you learn about her, um. What you see, you know, I'm going to handle premonitions this way. What you see is many people giving her things, um, mm. almost like you kind of look at it like maybe she runs some sort of protection service or something. <clears throat> That's what you see. Mm. I'm just going to, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to think it over. She said, so nobody's going to answer the lady? How about you, Mr. Swordsy? She's, look, she's looking at you, Tanger. I, I look over at Blastone, and I'm like, I'm going in this hole right here. Blastone's like, um, uh, just kind of looking every other way. He's not, you know, making good eye contact with her. She said, okay, okay. So what? You boys, uh, uh, it's a boys club. I understand you don't like the ladies, huh? Murphy, Murphy, I need you to come over here and talk to these boys. They get nervous around the girls. And a couple of seconds go by, 30, 40 seconds, and then you know, scuttling over as a, another gnome. Uh, he's dressed in pretty nice leathers as well, you know. <clears throat> All right. Listen. This here is Kira. This is her neighborhood, okay? You want to work in a neighborhood? You got to pay. There's a toll, okay? How's that? Um, at what, that. But that runk is just gonna gonna look this guy in the eye and just hold up a fist. Do you accept fists as currency? <clears throat> always, you guys always want to run around with one big stupid one. <laughs> any you rate, call stupid. Any, any, any rate, listen, you guys want to operate freely. You know, in the area, it's all good. All you gotta do, Harry Murphy, two gold each, eight gold, you're good for the week. You can do what you want. Um, uh, Runk is super unhappy at being called stupid. Um, unless someone stops him, he's just gonna punch this guy full strength. Not only will I not stop him, I'm gonna look <laughs> at Runk because we've actually had these situations before. Yeah. And I give him that subtle, not so subtle, <laughs> like, like the wink. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use a fleet of foot, um, so I can move a short distance as part of another action, and then combine that with a attack action to punch this guy. All right, give me an initiative roll. All right. <clears throat> uh, ha, ha, yes, natural twenty. <laughs> you did. You kind of hit him. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna blast this guy. I'm just gonna smash him in the face. Uh, I am gonna apply, um, apply a fit to damage. Gonna apply one little fit to damage. Um, smart that off. Okay. Yep. Uh, so it's gonna be yeah. So spin lever and I'm uh, dealing five base. Dean. Can I, um, since he got a natural 20, can I waste the XP to do an action as well? Well, you, I want to charge your XP. Go for it. Because I'm going to do a surprise attack, and what I want to do is, since he's punching it, I'm going to go around and put my blades behind the lady's neck. 
I'm and by the way, my punch, I'm not I'm not mucking around. I'm just punching this guy in the face. Right gotcha. in the face with my full strength. All right, give me how much damage did you do? Uh, or... so I uh, I was five plus a uh, level of effort. So eight points of damage? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you deck this gnome cleanly, you know, <laughs> hit, hit him so hard he's like <laughs> he like slides like three feet. <laughs> Um, Anthony, yeah, make an attack roll. I'm apply a level of effort. This is speed. Yep. All right, I got a 17 on the roll with the level of effort. It's uh, 20. All right. So, and I'm not trying to hit them. I'm I'm just when, right. When when I need to... punched, I'm ducking under and just putting my blade to her um, neck. I specifically because I got a um. Oh, I got a net. It was a net twenty on my my attack. Initiative. So it have, oh man, it was, it was on my initiative, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, what's the effect? What was the major effect on that? Yeah, you want a major effect? Okay. Um, give me give me a major effect. Um, what would you think? As part of my um. Uh, as part of my, you know, when I've when I've bowled this guy, I want to then pin him to the ground, you Perfect. know, foot foot you, on chest, you got crushing him. down. You yeah, you got him. So Anthony, you go to slip around her and put your blade to her neck, and that image of her kind of fades, and she's about three feet to your left, with a rapier <sighs> to the side of your head. I um I I'm a reposition. So I, I'm a I'm a sword fighter. So someone having a blade to me is not gonna intimidate me. Right. It's gonna actually excite me. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> she goes, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna turn my blade to reposition. Okay, go for, give me initiative. Uh, should we all be rolling initiative? If you are all getting into the into the fray. Yep. Well, I've, yeah. Um, does my net 20 from before stand or do I roll again? Yeah. Uh, I'll let I'll let it stand. Okay, cool. I got a 17 on initiative. I have a 14. I got a 13. 17. No level of effort, Anthony? Nope. All right, so Ray, you go first. All right. Um, so I'm gonna see see, you know what's happening to my buddy with the with that whole rapier thing uh i'm going to uh i'm going to fleet of uh fleet of foot again uh fleet of foot of course uh short distance is she within short distance of me yes you can move to her yeah. if you wanted to so, oh i'm gonna move to her and i'm gonna uh make an attack uh looking to disarm looking to basically just put as much po power into a hit on her wrist so she'll drop the rapier Okay, I have a GM intrusion for you. Uh oh, all right. Um, Who are you giving the other XP to? Uh, I'm going to spend an XP to reject it. Oh, oh. Okay. No one's messing with my punch. I want to yeah. right. hit. All right, I yep. like it. I only have one XP and I've spent it. So. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, so go ahead. Give me a, give me a to hit roll. All right. Uh, that is a so that's a 14 on the die, uh, plus six, so that's a 20. You actually do hit her. Um, Ooh. and uh, how much damage? Uh, that's gonna be uh, five, five damage. You knock her hand away, and as you knock her hand away, she doesn't drop her blade. Damn. But she takes the momentum from when you hit her and spins ah. and throws a, a throwing blade at you. Speed ah. defense roll, please. Great. All right. Um, it's her turn. She's second in initiative order. Yep. So, yeah, uh, so that's a 14 on the die, but I'm trained. So uh, 17. Yep, she hits. Oh. Um, uh -oh. You take, you take uh, four points of damage. Blades right. to you, right in the chest. Uh, Anthony, you're up. Fuck. All right, I'm seeing this. How far are we from the hole? The the gate. The 
the um entrance to the tunnel, you know, to the that might be about 15 feet, your immediate distance. Oh, so I want to run and slam her so we both fall into the tunnel. Oh, you're gonna slam her on the grate? <laughs> yeah, no, we opened the grate. Didn't you say I opened it and I think no, you when you went to open the gate, the rust monster came. But you oh, can slam it her on it. Inside, it came from it came from on top. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm slamming her into the grate. Go for it. I got a natural 19. Okay, so you slam her into the grate. You want extra damage? No, I want to. Okay, so when you slam her into the gate, you hear, and the grate breaks open, and the two of you fall, smash right into the ground, maybe about 10 feet down. Um, how much damage did your attack do? It, it was just my shoulder, so it's a minor, I guess, two points. Oh, uh, okay, so two... Oh, and the one electrical. Uh, electric right, damage. right. So three. three points of damage plus two. Okay, so you take two points of my damage from the fall. Okay. With my effect, because she... My minor effect, because she blocked the fall and I don't take those two points of damage, I land on top of her. Sure, I'll let it stand. When you when she hits the ground, you she uh, and she goes, "Oh, is this foreplay, there, big boy?" I'm almost intimidated. I'm yelling up, "Hey guys, I opened the grate. Let's go down." <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna. If I, are we selecting an initiative round or are we? No, no. This is. I don't know. I need to know what Drowden and uh, they haven't Bob gone. Blasto are doing. Oh, uh, yep. Um. So now, oh wait, it's not my turn. Blastor. Who's, who, who's next in initiative? I think it's Blastor. You bet, you bet, Blastor. All right. Um, well, we've got an open grate, so I'm just gonna hot foot it into the uh, into the grate and hit the ground next to uh, Anthony and our our new friend. She's just smiling at Anthony at uh, at Tanger. Big smile on her face. Sure, you get grins. What about you, Drowden? Um, I am going to jump through the grate the same way. Um, and when I land on the ground, I'm going to use my illuminated weapon ability to uh, light my great sword with daylight with an immediate range and oh, I'm nice. raise it above my head and say we are we represent the powers of Lothian back down or perish all right so you you light up the area in the immediate area around you and you find yourself in a more or less large open uh hallway or a corridor it's roughly hewn corridor and you see about and you can see your light cast out about eh, say about 15 feet around you mm -hmm. and it just lightens up and you can see that the corridor goes on a little bit further you probably could sur surmise maybe 20 30 feet down you know to and and then it just is all black I'm so about 30 feet is illuminated, you know, the first 15 feet is all visible. And then there's like 15 more feet. That's like in shadows. Yeah. I'm still uh, sitting on this lady, Dean. Huh? I'm still sitting on this lady. Yeah. I you... go, okay. If I get up, are you going to hit me? <laughs> it's a valid I didn't... question. She, she... <clears throat> See, I didn't hit you the first time. I only gave that little, I only gave the uh, the big one who wants to like throw hands, just gave him a taste of his own medicine. I was just here to talk. You were speaking here to shake us down. No, no, no. It's not a shakedown. A shakedown would be if I took your pants and, you know, we talked about other things. I just been asking for my, my just dues. This is my neighborhood. You know, I got to I got to a lady's got to eat, right? Um I'm still up, I'm still up top, right? With the yes. the gnome guy. Yeah. Yes. 
Is he still? Is he alive after my after oh, my punch? Don't worry. We, we there's something coming for you. <laughs> is, is, is he alive? Is he alive? Like looking at him, is he alive? Um, well, you I both you look and he's not there. Ah, shit. Uh, like I said, I'll get to you in just a second. Oh God. Here we go. I, I would be like, I'm looking at my two partners here. Like, what should I do? Should I get up? Um. I'm going to fleet of foot as an action to move a long distance and try and get down the grate to okay. where everyone else is. What I need you to do before you do that is give me a speed defense roll and it's hindered. All right. By two steps. Uh, so uh, I'm trained. So just basically treat as hindered by one. That's a 14. So 11. Okay. Um, you take five points of might damage. Ah, shit. As a blade protrudes from your side you've just been shivved and he goes you like punching people i like sticking them and you see he's got another blade in his other hand and he's getting ready to stick you again well can i can i punch him sure i can yeah i'm gonna uh screw this guy i'm gonna (laughs) blast blast him again uh that's uh natural it's an 18 east by two further steps you hit um so 24 (laughs) yeah all right Uh, that's five damage. Okay, you hit him and knock him out cold. He just all right. Poof. What was that? Punch his ass. All right. So um, Andrew, and yep. so what are you doing down there? You see uh Tanger like laying on top of this woman, you know. She's got a big smile on her face. Um, and they're having a a, a conversation. Danger, I think it's about time we got going. Yeah, but if I get up, I'm pretty sure she's going to hit me. Then we hit her again. If she's smart, she'll stay where she is. She kind of looks around. Are you smart? She, 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 wait, wait, wait. Something else is going on here. I didn't know about this, boys. We could come to some agreements. Um, when I'm next able to take an action, let me know because I've got something planned. Okay. She looks at uh, she looks over at you, Draudin, and she goes, "It seems your friend here doesn't talk much, and you look like you might be the one in charge with that big old sword there." So, uh, I'm just a saying. Uh, you know, you found me a nice little tunnel to come down. Can you get this guy off me? It depends on <clears throat> what your intentions are. We have our ways, you have yours. My intentions I to see what's down here. You know? It's probably enough to go around. Um, do I see... I don't see... Um, let's see. Who's down here? Everybody except Runk, right? Yeah, yeah Runk is still up top. Yeah. So I don't know that he's been stabbed a couple of times, do I? Nope. Okay. Um, we don't really need any help. We're fine on our own. If we let you go, you have to get out of here. Now see, that's not, no, no, no. You come to my neighborhood. You take liberties. You throw me in a hole. Not even nicely, for that matter. And then, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the catacombs. Everybody's allowed to go in the catacombs. So guess what? I could do my thing with you, or I could do my thing without you. But I don't have to leave. But you can get Big Boy here off me before I have to hurt him. Yeah, I told you she was going to hurt me. Excuse me? 
No, I was talking to that. <laughs> she says, excuse I never said I was going to hit you. I just said, get off me. You know, the last time I laid with the man, it was, you know, it was, it was a different story. It was mutual. Now I'm feeling violated. Guys, this Andrew, is just get up. All right. Well, he says that I yeah, get up. Just get up. <clears throat> I get up. She gets I get up. up and then like scurry behind Blasto. <laughs> <laughs> she stands up and, and dusts herself off. So are we working together or are we working against each other? I think we're just not working together. As you said, it's the catacombs. There's lots here. I think we can split them up where maybe you, you know, you go your way, we go our way. I'm going to call up to Runk and see how he's doing. Um, All right, Runk, uh, Runk you hear uh, you hear Drowden call your name. The guy, the guy, the guy I just punched. He's unconscious, right? Yes. I'm gonna take one of my darts and I'm gonna stick it into his heart as hard as I can. <laughs> I mean to kill. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to coot a grow this guy on the ground because mm -hmm. one of my darts and just put it right through his heart while Not he's on problem. the ground. You, you, you can do that. Right. You don't um, even have to roll. You don't even have to roll for that. That's. I mean, he's completely non-combative right now um, okay um yeah once i've once i've pushed that through his heart and i've killed him i'm gonna throw his corpse down the down where the rest of the party are <laughs> and i'm like looking up to see if i see <laughs> rock and next thing i know i have to dodge very very belatedly <laughs> look out below <laughs> all right so <laughs> well the body lags i just look at them and go, oh walks all right <laughs> She goes, okay. I see how it is. Yeah. And Can she you... like steps back out of your way. Maybe we should take her with us. Take what? For what? For food? Did you hit your head on the way down? <clears throat> do, you, do you make your way down, Runk? Uh, yeah, and like I am, because I don't wear any armor. I am. I've obviously been stabbed multiple times. There's blood ballooning across my my clothes and, and t multiple points. Um, I am like I'm. I'm oh, you've I'm, only been stabbed once, but you were stabbed real good. I got then I get I got stabbed by her and then stabbed. Oh by right, you got him. you got a you got a blade. In I your got shoulder. one. The, got blade in the shoulder and then another hit from the guy from behind. So I've got at least two. Yeah, you got two yeah. wounds. You got one with blood just all over my clothes. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll climb down and then just sort of stand there, blood sort of dripping down. All right, I'm going to use healing on him, but it oh says God. that this ability is a difficulty two intellect task. Yeah. So that means I have to roll for it every time I use it. Yes. And what happens is this: when you use it, it's um, it's too difficulty. Um, if it's any point cost, you use the points. And then if he needs to be healed again within 10 hours, then it's going to be a difficulty three. It goes up every time within a 10 hour period. So right. on the same person. Oh, okay. So I can heal him now. Do I still have to make a DC two roll? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll apply a level of effort. Oh, All right. So I don't roll have... a one. Yeah, Please. <laughs> but that's an intellect role, so yikes. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> it's never good when your healer's saying yikes right before they roll. <laughs> well, just because I can heal doesn't mean I'm very good at it. Okay, I rolled a 13. All right, so how, how many points does he get back? He gets back three. See, oh. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> So your wounds close up. You're not completely healed, but your wounds are have all stopped bleeding. 
Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm like two. I'm like two solid hits away from being debilitated, <laughs> even with that healing. <laughs> you you could take a. a, a, a <laughs> you can take a recovery it. roll. Yeah, yeah, you can take a recovery uh, roll. My yeah. my one action recovery roll was pre ticked when I got my sheet. That doesn't um, mean anything. That was a so, mistake. Oh, okay, then I'll spend my one action recovery. Uh, and I got a four, so six. There you go. Now I'm feeling better. All right, so she moves out the way. She looks at you, uh, Runk, and she smiles, but the smile never reaches her eyes. Um, I'm just going to look down at the guy killed. Looks like the trash is already here. <clears throat> Dealt with it for you. Uh, the way I see it, you owe me. I took care of this. He was weak. He couldn't serve you. He couldn't work for you. I got rid of them. I did you a service. And Grant's just standing there smiling very cockily. Yeah. And she goes, mm-hmm. See, you did. Well, I'll be seeing around, boys. And she starts headed towards the there. You can the guys see there there actually is a ladder on the wall that you can climb <laughs> up. <laughs> but everybody jumped and fell down the hole. So, and she starts climbing back up. That Wait. could have gone better. I still say we should have brought her with us. I still say, did you hit your head on the way down? Actually, she <laughs> broke my fall. Look, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good. And and Rex just kind of wiping at the the blood spatters. Yeah, I'm all right. He isn't. Points down at the dead guy. Oh man. So what are you guys doing? Is someone gonna light the way for us? Because I know you. I think we have a lit lit sword, don't we? Yeah, it was the lit blade. Yeah. yeah, doesn't actually say how long my illuminated weapon lasts. So I have it lasts until you so. extinguish it. Oh, I have night vision, so if you want me to go ahead, I can. I mean, I have torches, but the illuminated sword is so much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. cool. It is really cool, but it only you know it only show it doesn't show light as far as the torch work. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. It's only an immediate distance. Oh, by the All way, right. um, I forgot to mention this, Dean. The next time you hit me with an intrusion, I ca I can't choose to reject can't. it because of doom. I know. Yeah, because of doom. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> I'm s Runk is so screwed. All right. You know, Dean. So can I run up ahead with my night vision and just do like a little scouting, maybe like fifty feet ahead, if you want? All right, well, I'm gonna light a torch anyway. <clears throat> All right, so you uh, move up ahead, uh, Anthony, Tanger, I should say. And as you move up ahead, um, probably, like I said, because the, the light went out to about 30 feet or so, you know, and then once you cross that line, you literally come to a spot and you find that there's a junction in the corridor and you can see at about another 30 feet ahead that there's another, there's an opening, what looks to be a much larger area, but there's a, there's a, a small junction to your left. I stopped there and see if there's a place where I could like lean my back down and try to be out of sight. And I'm going to go into my bag and pull out, uh, let me see what I have here. Uh, uh, Oh, I have a small dagger. I'm going to pull out a small dagger and throw it in the direction of... Um, actually, no, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to run back and let him know exactly what I saw. Okay, so he, he basically um, gives you a... Uh, gives you a rundown of what he's seen. What are you guys doing? Hey, Dean. Yes. I have Shroud of Flame, which allows me to sheathe my entire body in flame. Um, 
and I can do that pretty much at will mm -hmm. um, because of my edge. Can I just like light my hand on fire and carry it like a torch? <laughs> That'd be sure. Cool. If you want to, why not? So yeah, you got two torches going on. You got, you know, uh, Blasto's hand all lit up, held up over his head, and Draldin is carrying a torch. Now he please put his sword away. So yeah, Anthony, you get back and you tell everybody, you know, what's going on. What are you guys' next course of action? So which passes way do we go? Where's the map? So with my not flaming hand, I pull out the book and the map. Why is it and so hot in here? Oh, that's why. Do we think that we're here? You guys are, I'm, I'll ping it for you, right over there. You guys are right here. Oh, we're, He we're went up here, down. and this is where he saw the junction. And then straight ahead is where he saw the opening. All right. Okay. Ping again, Dean. I didn't see it. The junction is right there. You guys are there right about here. Um, knowing full <laughs> well that there's an intrusion coming at me soon, I'm just going to walk. Uh, Runk is just going to walk straight in. He's just going to walk straight, you know, just. So you're not even <laughs> going to discuss anything with anybody? Oh, I mean, if people try, I mean, he needs to walk past people. So if people like don't right. want him to do that, he'll stop, but. Okay. Yeah. Now he can he can he can find the traps anyone? on the way with his face. Yeah. <laughs> anyone anyone mind if I just walk in? No. Anyone? <laughs> Lead I'm on. Say I don't have that much healing left, so take, um, take yeah, it easy. And yeah, no, I'm uh, yeah. He's just gonna stroll in. He's not like running or anything, but he's just gonna <clears throat> he's just gonna casually walk in. All right. Oh, lead away. Lead away. <laughs> All right. So you start making your way down. Um, do you do you go down the, the little junction or do you go right into the bigger area? I'm going for the big area. Yeah. But yeah, just as far as the torch is illuminating, I'm not going into the dark or anything. All right. So perfect. So as you move forward, as you move forward into that big room, strangely enough. The minute you pass the threshold <laughs> into that that big area, the room is slightly lit. Okay. You know, uh, there's an eerie glow emanating from the walls. Looks like, you know, you know how moss grows up the side mm. of the wall or, or, or vines? That's what it looks like, but there's just a really dull glow. Yeah. Okay. But you can see that that glow does not leave the other side. When if you took a step back mm. through that threshold, you wouldn't. You don't see the glow. You don't see anything. I'm gonna. You... I'm gonna turn back to my compatriots. Do any of you see the glow? This room's glowing. You guys don't see that until you walk past the threshold. The room's glowing. Why is it glowing? Someone smarter than me. <laughs> Um, Dean, I have on my sheet some sort of magic lore. Let me see. Yeah, magical lore. Okay. Nice. And we're going to call that the cliffhanger for you guys stepping through <gasps> into the eerie room. Oh. And we're going to take a 10 minute break oh. <laughs> and get back into the festivities. Brutal. Brutal. So yeah, yeah. Um, thank you guys for stepping in, watching the show. We're going to take a little break here. It's me, the Invisible Ancient Albatross, here to kick us into intermission. So stick around. We're going to take a little five-minute break while our cast here gets some drinks, uh, use a bathroom maybe. But yeah, we shall return in just a moment. So uh, stay seated, grab yourself some refreshments, and we will be back shortly. So from us at the CU, we will see you in a little bit. The most high overseer, Al.